nicknamed Blue Fingers. Dante Lavelli was one of Coach Paul Brown's first deep threats. Lavelli caught 11 passes, including two touchdowns to help the Cleveland Browns win their first NFL championship in 1950. Quarterback Otto Graham felt comfortable throwing to the sure-handed and quick-footed receiver for good reason. I like my own tactics of how to play it and to play off I like the offensive side of football. Let the defense stop. Wade, the Ram quarterback, fires a long pass downfield to Del Softer, who's all alone to complete a 55-yard scoring play. A long pass to Del Softer. The play carried for 54 yards of the first down. Up. Del Softer takes the quick angle pass to Wade, then full hips his way through heavy traffic. Three yards to the Baltimore two-yard line. With Tots of the Lions strike. Lane pitches out to Doak Walker, who passes into the end zone. Boyce Box flags the ball for a touchdown. Lane's long pass is taken by Boyce Box at midfield, and Box races to the end zone for the touchdown. The play covered 97 yards and puts Detroit within one point of the Packers. Fifth. Explosive receiver named Harlan Hill that the Bears regained their winning swagger. Harlan Hill's heart-stopping catches are a trademark of the Chicago Bears. Watch this one. Ed Brown sends it up and Hill's on the other end as he gets away from two Colts for a 45-yard touchdown. Number 87 provided an instant boost to the offense. Hill, when he first came up, Blame me, you didn't like to play against him because he could really go deep, he could catch the ball over the middle, he could run fast, he could block, he could do it all. Hill continued to impress on the field, but life in the NFL took its toll on the farm boy from Alabama. Tom Fears was a true forward pass pioneer, racking up huge numbers in an era dominated by the run. His impact on the league was immediate, leading all receivers during his first three years. Fear's finest day came in 1950, when he caught an unprecedented 18 passes in one game. The Packers dominated the Los Angeles Rams on October 21st, 1956, thanks to the remarkable individual performance by wide receiver Billy Houghton. Houghton had seven catches for 257 yards and two touchdowns in the game. 257 yards receiving is the most yards by a single player in franchise history. Deception, Tittle, rolling out, faking the run, draws up the defensive halfback, finds Wilson behind him, hits Billy, in full stride, Clendon Thomas after him, Billy going in to score for San Francisco. <laughs> Hirsch came to the Los Angeles Rams in 1949, armed with speed, quickness, and a great set of hands. Hirsch also came with a nickname that epitomized his athletic skill. It's like Spike or Babe or something like that. It, uh, it just, I, I wouldn't know what to do if somebody called me Elroy. Most people call me Legs. Legs, or Crazy Legs, as he was most often referred to, was an integral part of the explosive Rams offense of the 1950s. He had his best season in 1951, catching 66 passes for almost 1,500 yards and 17 touchdowns. Hirsch played with a style and exuberance that has rarely been seen since his retirement in 1957. Colts receiver Raymond Berry is living proof that while Hall of Famers are born, they also can be made. I hated to drop a football. It uh, was what really motivated me to find some way not to drop them. And so that led to developing uh, a routine or a program in which uh, every day, every week. I just... 
Pete Pios was an important member of the Eagles' 1948 and 1949 championship clubs. He was a physical player who could play both sides of the ball. Pios was a consistent receiver with great hands and an unorthodox style of catching the football. Despite being a prolific receiver, it's a play on special teams that Pete Pios recalls most fondly. We're playing now in Washington. And I took the damn ball off his hands, off his foot, and went for a touchdown. 